A friend of mine asked me what my best case for nuclear energy was, and I wondered if I could fit this in a nutshell as good as possible. So here comes the humanist case for nuclear energy. We need more low-carbon, clean, high-tech energy to lift people out of poverty while effectively addressing climate change. I want all people on the planet to live in general prosperity, safety and happiness. A high energy per capita correlates with better living standards and this is underlined by academic studies. Before the turn of this century, we will need more energy to provide basic needs like water, food, shelter and health care for an additional 2 billion people. The reason why I say high tech is because it will provide high intelligence and high education spin-offs. The general population of a country will become more knowledgeable and scientifically literate as educated people are in greater demand and there is an infrastructure in place to provide the opportunities to become educated. If implemented carefully with a bottom-up strategy in mind, everybody will benefit from a nation's goal to reach new heights. Each child should be well nourished and this is not just in terms of food, water and love, but also in terms of education. Sciences like physics, chemistry and biology should be a staple in schools. But don't forget we need dancers and musicians and artisans too. One of the core values of any humanist is to think for yourself and to have science and reason as your guidelines. So let us consider the mathematical viewpoint of this argument. It is unsure how much energy we will need when the 9.5 billionth member of our species will be born. Some say it can be done with as little as 100,000 terawatt hours a year. Others say it is more likely that it will be around 300,000 terawatt hours a year. Suppose that we would need 300,000 terawatt hours and the average capacity factor of the sum of all technologies would be about 35%, then we would need roughly 100,000 gigawatts of capacity. This is what we call energy reality, and it is something that hasn't yet dawned on the people who remain steadfast that renewables will save mankind from what is to come. According to the REN 21 2017 report, we have added 129 gigawatts of solar and wind. If we would apply a sustained 5% growth rate, it would take us 150 years to get to 100,000 gigawatts of capacity. And that's not fast enough. Here, nuclear energy comes into the picture. Nuclear energy as it is today is not even as remotely dangerous as many people suppose. The effects from Chernobyl and Fukushima, for instance, are very well documented. And we now know that it was far less dangerous than initially thought. In fact, the opposite is true. Nuclear energy has already saved millions of lives, according to Professor James Hansen. And that's why I feel a responsibility to explain to people how nuclear energy works, what radioactive isotopes are, and what radioactivity is. I do this because I am convinced that a well-informed person is less likely to be afraid of nuclear energy, because that is unnecessary. But he or she will also influence those people around him. My second argument is based on figures and technology. Nuclear energy has capacity factors which are vastly superior to any other energy source. Nuclear energy is vastly more efficient in terms of putting valuable materials to good use. And nuclear energy isn't as expensive as people say it is. Even if we would add the costs of Chernobyl and Fukushima. But more importantly, and reverting to the idea that we need somewhere between 100,000 and 300,000 terawatt hours. If we add contemporary nuclear energy to the mix, we would augment the decarbonization speed significantly. And this is based on generation 3 and generation 3 plus reactors, which the Russians and Chinese and Koreans are building all over the place.
But if we would transition to Generation 4, which is about to happen within a decade, where reactors can be manufactured rather than built, we may augment the decarbonization curve even more. Most of you know that my focus is on the molten salt reactor. I am particularly optimistic about terrestrial energy, Thorcon Power, and Copenhagen Atomics, but also Lysium Industries. The first three are thermal reactors that will run on low enriched uranium, but the Lysium Industries is building a fast reactor that can pretty much use anything as fuel, including spent nuclear fuel, depleted uranium, and weapons grade plutonium. In summary, one, we need to defeat coal, gas, and oil to keep the oceans from acidifying, temperatures from rising, and people dying from air pollution. 2. The well-being of my fellow primates comes first. This is dependent on energy prosperity. 3. Careful investigation of the numbers, including material requirements and material production rates, have made me come to realize that wind and solar and the other renewables themselves are not strong enough to defeat climate change and provide enough energy. 4. Nuclear energy is much safer than people realize, and also much cooler. 5. Nuclear energy deployment rates will be augmented significantly with the advent of Generation 4 reactors. So now you know why I have become a fierce advocate for nuclear power, and I hope that you will join me. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.